Welcome back to another episode of the Storycraft Society. This week, we are going to be trying to recreate this resin cabin that I bought years ago, and we're gonna be making it with foam. It's Thursday again, and that means we are back with another episode of the Storycraft Society. My name is Garmin. Welcome back. I'm so excited to have you all here, and I'm in a great mood today. That's for two reasons. The first one is, let's go take a look. It's snowing outside. A snow day is a good day. What can I say? I love the cold, I love the snow. So that's first. Second of all, we're gonna be talking about this resin cabin that I bought years ago. Now, I will say a couple of things about it. One, it was just this kind of brown resin when I first bought it, so I painted it up. I'm the one who made it look, you know, the way that it looks. I added the tile grout in to be the mud in between the logs. I did enhance it a little bit, but since we do a lot of crafting here on the channel, I always felt a little cheap throwing this thing out into my sets, even though I really like the way that it looks, and I feel like it has a really cool character that a lot of my other buildings just don't have. So, what I decided to do with this week's video is see if I could recreate this thing out of foam. Let's jump into it. So to start this off, we're gonna be making a substructure out of EPS foam that's expanded polystyrene. This is the crappy stuff that you would get out of like packing materials that kind of bubbles off when you break it into pieces. I like to use this stuff as my substructures because it saves me money. I don't have to spend my good XPS insulation foam. So what I did was I made a four inch by five inch block of this stuff. That's just me guessing about the size of the cabin that I already had. And then that's going to be my substructure. Hey, hey, if you're liking this content, don't forget to leave me a like down below. Definitely leave me a comment of what you think of the video so far. And please subscribe to this channel if you haven't. If this is your first time watching my content, definitely, definitely, definitely subscribe if you're liking it. And definitely if you know someone who likes crafting terrain into their stories or likes crafting stories in general, this is the channel for them. So please share, let them know about these videos. Thank you so much. Back to the video. The next step was to make logs out of XPS insulation foam. Now the reason I chose XPS here is because I can carve more fine detail into this style of foam. So I cut my foam into half inch by half inch strips and then I cut them to the length of the side of the cabin. So one side for me was actually five and three quarter inches and the other side was four and three quarter inches. Honestly, this is one of those things where you kind of just measure by sight. You're not really measuring to a specific point. The one thing that I will say about doing logs like this is there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. You can do it the way that I did with a crafting knife, cutting off edges until you have a basically circular shape. You don't want it to look perfect because obviously they're logs and that won't make them look natural. But another thing that you can do is actually just take sandpaper and keep sanding until you get that same shape. I like cutting it uh, better myself. It's just a little faster and you don't have to deal with all of the little particles going everywhere, but either way works. Next thing was to move on to, I think, the hardest part of this build, which was faithfully recreating the chimney. Now the chimney on this resin piece that I have is this really neat, although I'll say very dangerous looking, barrel chimney. So what I wanted to do is make sure that I could recreate that as well. So what I did was I cut the shape of the barrels out of the XPS using an X-Acto knife and just was real careful to try and carve the general shape. Then I made a block for the fireplace itself and then used just random bricks and things that I had around the bottom. Doing the fireplace was easy but getting the barrels ready and textured and looking good, that was gonna be more of a challenge. So the way that I started was by first taking a craft knife and cutting all of the planking that runs on the outside of my barrels. Then I took my plastic wire brush, just like I did the logs, and I brought in all of my wood texture, but then I needed something to do the banding. So what I decided to do was pull out my Eileen's Tacky Glue and get some string. I saturated the string with the, the tacky glue, and then I would take and wrap that around the barrels. I am so pleased with how this ended up turning out. It was one of those kind of, oh, I hope that it works. I hope that this turns out looking like the other ones did. 
did. And by the time it gets to the end, I really think that they look similar. So I was super pleased. But now it was time for me to mount my chimney to the structure. And I realized that I needed the upper part, uh, what was gonna be the peak of the roof. So I took and made some more supports out of my EPS foam and then used a craft stick just to glue them all together to get them a little bit more strength, make them a little more sturdy. And then I pulled out my hot glue gun and I glued my chimney in place. So now let's talk about what ended up being the hardest part of this build. The logs, getting them to link up and Lincoln log their way around the outside of the structure was for me, surprisingly difficult. Me trying to explain to you what or how I did things, I don't think is gonna do anybody any good. So first of all, if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them in the comments below. But here is just a montage so you can just get a general idea of what I did. Just know it's okay sometimes when you're crafting, it's important that you don't worry with knowing the right way to do it. You just keep working on it until it looks right. And that's what I did here. So. Enjoy the montage. With the logs done, it is time to move on to the tarp uh, gum cloth roof. Now this is one of my favorite parts. It really gives the resin cabin a lot of character. And so I wanted to faithfully recreate that. So I pulled out a piece of my old cloth. I cut it out just like we did in the tents video. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. I will link that down in the description below. But what I did was I cut it to shape. I made sure that it fit nicely on and then I absolutely saturated it with watered down PVA glue. Now, the glue that I use here is Elmer's. You could use whatever you want. I just feel like my watered down Elmer's soaks in better than like watered down tacky glue. That could totally be just, you know, my little quirk or whatever, but that's how I feel it works best. I also laid down glue where the cloth would be connecting to the substructure. I feel like that's really important because it allows the cloth to get a 100% glue grip in the places where it makes contact, you know. Then I wanted to recreate the nails that are being used to hold in the resin pieces roof. So what I did was I pulled out push pins and I just drove them in all around the canvas top that I have on my cabin and it worked great. These little nail heads just look perfect and I'm really stoked with how they turned out. The last thing that I wanna say about the roof is there are patches all over my resin piece. And these patches I think look really good, but you're gonna notice by the end of this that I didn't put patches on mine. And there's two reasons for that. The first one I'm gonna give you is the artistic reason. I really wanted these two pieces to feel separate, to be you know, different cabins, maybe in the same place, but not the exact same thing. That's my artistic uh, reason. My second reason is just honestly laziness. I really thought about putting these patches in and I was like, do I really wanna fuss with putting these little patches in that nobody is gonna pay attention to, that nobody is gonna be stoked to see? And I was like, absolutely not. Absolutely not, not even messing with it. So here's one of those things. I don't think it hurt the end piece at all. If you think it did, let me know in the comments below, but for me, it looks just fine without them. Laziness prevails again. <laughs> so the next thing that happened was I needed to get the door put together. Now the door in the resin piece is these two kind of vertical pieces and then the door sets right even with them. 
Honestly, that's one of the few things that I don't like about the cabin that I bought. I would like for the door to set in a little more. That's just giving a little bit of visual interest, no reason for that other than just personal preference. So I wanted to make sure to get that with my piece. So I started by cutting out the logs to make you know the room for the door to fit in. I created the two door jams, that was easy. I just used foam core, cut it into strips and glued them into place. I made a little step out of you know the scrap that I had just laying around, that was easy enough. And then it was time to get to the door. So the door itself was just a piece of foam core cut that set back in. I cut my planks out with a craft knife and then textured that using a plastic wire brush, glued that in place, added some cross supports, and basically this thing was done. Now for the doorknob, I didn't do anything spectacular here. All I did was take a wooden bead that I got from the craft section at Walmart and just glued that into place. Easy peasy, done. So as the crafting of this piece is coming to an end, it was time to start getting into the finer details. So I did a couple of things. One thing is I took a hot knife and I carved out the top of the barrel chimney. Nothing even worth filming there. But one thing that I did do is I went ahead and carved all of the log ends. Now basically the way that I did this was just making circles that slowly get bigger, trying to keep them sporadic and you know off a little bit. But honestly, I'm really surprised at how well this looks. I think carving foam is certainly one of my weakest areas in my crafting. And so anytime this works out, I'm always really pleased. But with the crafting done, it was time to move on to a Black Magic Craft base coat. You know it, you love it. It is a 50-50 mixture of black acrylic craft paint and matte Mod Podge, and that went over the whole piece. This adds strength to my foam and also gives me my base coat of black, and now it's time to paint this thing up. I want to talk about like the techniques and stuff that I'm gonna be using. Most of them are going to be from the Lazy Crafter's Guide to Painting Terrain video. I'm gonna be doing my woods just like I did the woods in that. I'm gonna be doing my stone just like I did the stone in that. There is a couple of differences and I think those differences are really important. I really like the Lazy Crafter's Guide to Painting system if you wanna call it that. I, I don't know that it's necessarily a system, it's just me finding a way to be lazy with painting, but it's really, really modular. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So on this, there are two different types of wood, let's call it, right? And when I say two different types of wood, I don't mean literally types of wood. I mean things that I want to be visually different. There's the logs, and then there's the door and the barrels for the chimney. So what I'm gonna do is take that system, it's a three paint system, and I'm gonna be doing a dark brown, a medium brown, and a light brown uh, to do the actual logs themselves of the cabin but then to get the door and the barrels to stand out, but still appear to be wood, I'm gonna actually replace the medium brown with a gray. That's it. I'm not gonna change anything else. I'm just going to change one color in the formula, and that little bit of color variation will make the logs appear very rich and brown, and it'll make the doors and barrels appear just a little bit more aged, and it doesn't take any extra work. Easy way to be lazy, let's get this thing knocked out. Now, the next thing to talk about is the mud. So the mud that goes in between the logs is actually just rapid setting tile grout. I have a beige color that I use for almost everything. And this was really easy because you just mix it up to a slightly thinner consistency than you normally would, and you can pour it down in. But here comes a note from Garmin in the process. So I actually totally forgot. You can actually take medicine droppers, particularly if you get the kind that have these like kind of curved tips. You can actually take it and soak up your tile grout and get a much cleaner line. So you can see that line is way, way, way cleaner than the others. Um, and it was actually my tightest line. So um, it's actually also worth mentioning, always do the back side of your piece first when you're doing something like this. That way you can learn from it and make corrections and all that stuff. So by the time you get to the front of your piece, you don't end up making silly mistakes like forgetting that you can use eyedroppers for this. So moving on, let's get it all knocked out. 
But there you have it. Once the tile grout dried, it was time to look at our work and see what we think. Honestly, this is one of those projects that I went into with absolutely no expectations. I hoped that I would end up with a good video for you all. But other than that, I was just hoping that I wouldn't embarrass myself on the internet. And I'm really pleased. I think that I did a very faithful recreation of this other piece. And now I have two of these awesome wilderness survival cabins that I really, really like and will be able to throw onto my table. So that's always a great thing. So I'm gonna leave you with the glamour outro shots. If you like this content, definitely subscribe. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of the cabins. Did I do a good job or do you think that I could have changed something and done a better job? Definitely let your friends know about this content if you think it's something that they would enjoy. But other than that, until next week, I got nothing else to say. Enjoy the glamour shots. We'll be seeing you. But with the crafting done, it was time to move on to a Black Magic Craft base coat. You know it, you love it. It is a 50-50 mop. <clears throat> you know it, you...